Greetings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel reading for this Holy Trinity Sunday, John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Dear friends, who have been born again of water and the Spirit in holy baptism, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus in our reading, saying this, If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Poor Nicodemus. Here he has come to Jesus by night that they might have a little rabbi to rabbi chat. Maybe talk a little shop, teacher to teacher, perhaps compare even a few theological notes with each other. To start things off, he offers Jesus the highest of compliments. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, for no one could do the th signs that you have done unless God was with him. Clearly, Nicodemus is expressing how impressed he is with Jesus. Not bad for a Pharisee, if you want to know the truth, but notice that Jesus ignores Nicodemus' attempt to butter him up. Instead, Jesus takes the whole conversation in a heavenly direction. All men, all men, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Poor Nicodemus. He can't believe his ears. He immediately attempts to try to figure it out. How can this be? How can a man enter into his mother's womb a second time to be born again? But Jesus did not say born again, but rather born from above. To be sure, the Greek word used can mean both again and or from above. Nicodemus took it in the former sense, to be born again, but Jesus clearly meant it in the latter sense, to be born from above. So much for all the born-again talk one hears in various Christian circles. No, the question is not, have you been born again, but rather, are you born from above? So what exactly does that mean? How does that work? Well, Jesus actually explains it. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. To be born from above is to be, is to be born of the Spirit. That is, to be born of water, and the Spirit of God in holy baptism. Flesh, however, only gives birth to flesh. That is our birth from below, our birth joined with and connected to our sinful parents that stretches way back to Adam and Eve to their and our inherited condition of sin. The Spirit, however, gives birth to Spirit. That is, our birth from above born anew in the forgiving waters of baptism, born as a new creation in Christ. In the opening of his gospel, St. John tells us, To all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. To be born from above, to be born of water and the Spirit, is, in other words, to be born of God. And that is what we are. Every baptized believer in Jesus is a child of God. But poor Nicodemus, he seems to be in over his head. 
tossed into the depths of the wisdom and knowledge of God, and he can barely swim without his religious water wings. He doesn't have a clue. He can't seem to connect the water and the spirit dots that go all the way back to the book of Genesis in creation. In Genesis, we read in the first chapter that water and spirit go together. Combine water and word and spirit, and you have the light and life and new creation that God gave us. But really, who can blame Nicodemus for missing the point? A lot who confess Jesus today also miss the point, and they think this new birth from above is something dry and waterless, so-called a spiritual thing, and in all the wrong senses of that word spiritual. And we, we need to own the truth, which is that we would not get it on our own either. After all, these things are as the Apostle says, Apostle Paul says, spiritually discerned, that is, taught by the Spirit, who imparts to us the spiritual wisdom through water and word of baptism. How wonderful and very appropriate it is that we get this gospel reading on this, the Sunday of Holy Trinity, a day when we celebrate the mystery of God himself. Three persons, Three divine persons in one divine being, three in one and one in three, a singular plurality and a plural singularity. It really is enough to make our heads spin as we recite the Athanasian creeds when we are together on this day with all of its uncreated, unbegottens, and incomprehensibles, and maybe we too toss up our hands with Nicodemus and we say with loud voices, how can these things be? And that's a good question for us to ask as we scratch our heads. Honestly, Trinity Sunday is a dip into the theological deep end of the pool, a reminder to us that God is bigger than our ability to understand greater than our reason, and defies all the tidy little God boxes that we have created. As baptized believers, we are born into the mystery of God himself, and we are reminded that we do not imagine or invent or otherwise cook up God, but rather God has revealed himself to us in the context of our understanding, in and through the person of his only begotten son, Jesus, who, who really is the centerpiece, the one on whom the spotlight of all of Scripture is focused. No one has ever seen God. St. John tells us, but God has made himself known known through his only begotten Son, the Word who became flesh, the second person of the undivided Holy Trinity. In him, and only in him, alone, God has made himself known to us. We take the doctrine of the Holy Trinity seriously because we take Jesus seriously. He is the one who reveals the Father, who sends the Spirit, who said, go, baptize, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who said, no one can come to the Father except through me. And then he said, I will send you another comforter who will be with you forever the spirit of truth. Were it not for Jesus, we would have no understanding of the Trinity or have anything to say about the Father and the Holy Spirit. 
Now be sure, we are caught up this morning in a mystery that defies our reason and our senses. And it reminds us, as it did Job, that God is God and we are not God. Some people describe a sense of awe and wonder when confronted by a beautiful sunset, the vastness of the oceans, or the loftiness of a mountain grandeur. Some marvel and are amazed at the intricacies of biology, chemistry, and physics. Some are in awe of the pictures of space from the Hubble telescope that it captures. But nothing, absolutely nothing, we can observe with our own senses and contemplate with our own reason can compare with the revealed knowledge of God that Jesus has given to us. God himself must tell us who and what he is and what he has done for us, what he has done for you, through his Son who took upon himself our flesh and became one of us. Interesting, today's Old Testament reading, the prophet Isaiah had the privilege of actually seeing God sitting on his throne, exalted and lifted up in great majesty, and yet, words to describe what he saw when he looked at God completely failed him. He could not describe God. He was able to describe the negative space around God, the train of his robe, the fiery angels with six pairs of wings, but he could not describe God. There were no words, no familiar images that would work. All we can do, just like Isaiah did, is fall on our faces, confess our sin, be absolved, and join with the angels in singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. For God alone is holy completely set apart from us, so utterly beyond us that we cannot look at him and live, much less describe the experience. And yet, God has willed to live with us as the Son in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. If you think about it, our God really makes no sense at all. Is he three or is he one? And the correct answer is, of course, yes, but that does not satisfy our minds or, or our hearts, especially if they are closed by sin. Never in a million years would we invent the God that Jesus has revealed to us and who is taught to us in the Bible? No, he is God who defies our notion of both respectability and reasonableness. Well, let's get back now to our brother Nicodemus because his story is not over. He appears two more times in the Gospel of John. Once, when he defends Jesus before the Sanhedrin when he's on trial in the Jewish religious high court, of which, of course, Nicodemus himself was a member. And then again, he shows up at the foot of the cross and along with Joseph of Arimathea, takes custody of the body of Jesus and help to prepare it for a proper burial. What happened to Nicodemus? Somewhere along the way, Nicodemus changed. 
This nighttime encounter with Jesus was just the start of something bigger than Nicodemus could ever have imagined. The one-time religious, religious Pharisee had become a disciple of Jesus. He literally loses his religion to gave, gain a savior. Did he understand everything perfectly? Well, not during this nighttime meeting with Jesus. And today as well, there is not a single theologian or any follower of Jesus who can honestly say that he or she fully understands the Trinity. God, however, is not for us to understand, explain, or rationalize, but rather he is to believe in, to receive all that he has to give to us. And that begins with our baptismal birth. Our birth from above by water and the Spirit. And it continues forever with eternal life in the triune God as we live out our baptismal lives. We don't have to understand God to receive his gifts, to be forgiven, to be justified, sanctified, glorified, to pray, prayer, to praise, or to give thanks. We just need to trust him. Remember the Athanasian Creed doesn't say we understand. It says we believe, we worship the Trinity in unity and the unity in the Trinity neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance or the essence of God. Or, I like to suggest, we put it a little bit simpler in the words of the holy angels, holy, holy, holy. That says it all right there. Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, and we because of his love for us, share in that glory. Blessed be the Father, blessed be the Son, blessed be the Holy Spirit, and blessed are we in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in Jesus. Amen.